Hello, everybody. Hi, and welcome to the second episode of So That's How It Works. People use language to speak and write. This makes it the most important means of communication with other people. Communication is a complex process and an important part of our daily life. To express their thoughts and feelings, people use words, phrases, and sentences. Sometimes they even use sounds and gestures. When we speak or write, we use language to perform a number of functions. We can greet, clarify, deny, express sympathy, and so on. In other words, what we say or write usually has an intended meaning. The forms or the words that we use to perform these functions can be in statements, questions, imperatives, or even exclamations. The forms or the words that we choose to perform a particular function will depend on the situation that we are in. So, there we have it then. Forms and functions. Let's see how some of these language forms are used to perform language functions. Andy and Ganesh are playing catch in a garden and carrying on a conversation. Listen carefully to what they are saying and how they say it. So we'll be meeting at the library tomorrow at 10 a.m., right? Yes, that's right. 10 in the morning. I beg your pardon? Oh, I said I have to be back by 1 p.m. Why do you have to be home so early? Well, I've won an essay. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you say that again, please? Well, I say that I've won an essay writing competition and I have to get and claim my prize. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to come along with me? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. I promised my father that I would help him paint the fence tomorrow afternoon. Oh, well, I'll call you when I get back, okay? Whoa! Come on! Where's the ball? I passed it to you. No, you didn't. I did. I... Hey, hey, give us back our ball! Hey, give us back our ball! So, what language functions did the boys perform? And what did they say? What words or forms did they use? Do you remember Ganesh's reply when Andy asked him about their meeting at the library the next morning? No? Let me refresh your memory. So, we'll be meeting at the library tomorrow at 10 a.m., right? Yes, that's right. 10 in the morning. Well, Ganesh was confirming what Andy said. His function was to confirm, and he did it by saying, yes, that's right, 10 in the morning. To congratulate is a language function, and it was used by one of the boys in the video that you just saw. Do you remember who congratulated whom and why? Well, it was Ganesh who congratulated Andy for winning the essay writing competition. He said, oh, that's great, congratulations. He used it in the form of an exclamation to perform the function of congratulating. Let's see how Andy responded when he was congratulated. He performed two language functions using two different forms. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to come along with me? Okay, so what were the two functions? Here's the answer. Andy responded with an exclamation. Thank you. He was thanking Ganesh. Andy went on to perform the function of inviting. He used a question, would you like to come with me, to invite Ganesh to go along with him. Okay, we've had these examples of language functions so far. To confirm, to congratulate, to thank, and to invite. Let's take a look at another language function from the Now You See, Now You Don't video before we move on to the next segment. Well, when Andy passed the ball to Ganesh for the last time, poof, it disappeared. This is what they say to each other. Where's the ball? I passed it to you. No, you didn't. 
So Jason, what was Ganesh trying to do when he said, no, you didn't? Well, he denied receiving the ball from Andy. His function was to deny and he did it using the form of a statement. Don't go away. We'll be right back with the next segment. Reading stories, poems, novels or plays allow us to see the world through the thoughts and experiences of other people. What do you think, Jason? I can't argue with that, Yasmin. Reading good literature helps us to explore our unique human qualities across cultural and geographical boundaries. It's a celebration of life across the globe. So, what are we going to look at today, Yasmin? Well, Jason, it's The Phantom of the Opera. It was written by a Frenchman named Gaston Leroux in 1911. It's a somewhat scary, bitter, sweet story of love, jealousy, and the ultimate sacrifice, giving up the one you love. And... Okay, okay, Yasmin, that's enough. Well, let's join our friends Mingwei, Ayman, and Ramo as they experience the Phantom of the Opera in their own special way. I think I just heard a ghost. Ghost? <laughs> ghost don't exist. They don't? But I heard a voice calling my name. Ayman. Ayman. It's just imagination. Ayman. 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 Now do you believe me? I told you it was a ghost. Hey. Oh, Wait a minute. Ghosts don't cough. But I know someone who does. Ayo, ayo, I don't hear my ba. Here's your ghost. Oh, Ramu, that's horrible of you. I'm sorry. I didn't plan to scare you. But when I heard you singing, I remembered the Phantom of the Opera. Of course, Christine, the opera singer, sorry, sings a thousand times better than you. Oh yes, the Phantom of the Opera. Ramu, the Phantom wasn't really a Phantom, was he? He was just a very ugly looking man, who wore a mask to cover his ugly face. You make a very good Phantom, Ramu, and you don't even need a mask. <laughs> <laughs> and Ramu, one more thing. The Phantom died in the end, so... <clears throat> you better watch out. Well, after this, we'll never forget the Phantom of the Opera. You know what? I like that story. It's actually quite romantic. Romantic? Yeah! No, seriously. It's all about love and pity. Christine pitied the Phantom. And she was grateful to him for teaching her how to sing well. She became famous because of him, you know. Yes, poor Phantom. Nobody loved him. Even his own mother didn't love him. Imagine how he must have felt. That's why he had so much of anger inside of him. Don't you kill Raul, remember? Raul? Hmm. Oh yes, Raul. The man who loved Christine. The Phantom was jealous of him. But he didn't kill him in the end. That's because you're so touched by Christine's kindness that he let Raul and her live happy ever after. And then he died. Poor thing. Ramu! Ramu! Oh no! It's a real, real ghost this time! Ghost my foot! That's my mom calling me home for dinner. I've got to go. Bye! Christine, I mean Yasmin, um, 
One scary experience today is enough for me. Well, okay, Eric. I mean, Jason, I'll practice later. Well, you have just watched our friends engage in a conversation about the Phantom of the Opera. If you haven't read the novel, uh, we would advise you to get it and read it today. Yes, I promise you that you will surely enjoy it. But a word of advice, do not read it in a dark, lonely place. And certainly not in an opera house. Just kidding! Jason, which character from the story do you like best? Well, I like Eric. I know he was scary and cruel and all that, but it was so touching in the end when he gave Christine the freedom to marry Raoul, the man that she loved. What a gentleman. And Yasmin, who's your favourite character? Mm, Christine. She was willing to give up the man she loved to save his life. What a sacrifice. She was willing to marry Eric to ensure Raoul's safety. What, what about, about you? you? Who's, Who's your, your favourite, favourite character? character? Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Oops, our third segment on So That's How It Works. Oops is about the common mistake in the English language. Something that all of us are guilty of. Sometimes we make mistakes when we speak and write because we do not fully understand how the English language system works. We make mistakes in spelling, in grammar, and in getting our meaning across. Let's watch the scene which involves Farhan and Andy. Jason, who gets his language all mixed up in the sketch? Farhan, so watch out his mistakes. so good. Oh, really? Try this one. Why? Is it more better than this? Maybe just one. Thank you. Winning, huh? Yep. I'm so bored. Why don't we go to the supermarket? Hmm, that's a good idea. I would love to buy some biscuits. And I want to buy the most biggest bottle of my favorite drink. Hmm. Come, let's go. Come. Okay. Don't forget your biscuits. Oh, yeah. mm. How many mistakes did poor Farhan make, Yasmin? Two. He made two super mega mistakes. Two? And they were? Here's the first. Really? Try this one. Why? Is it more better than this? Better is an adjective. We use it to compare nouns. It is actually the comparative of the word good. Good, better, best. So since it's already in the comparative form, we do not need to use the word more. We just say better, not more better. Okay? So this is what Farhan should have said. Why? Is it better than this? Okay, Yasmin. I'll do the next one. Right, here's Farhan's second mistake. Now I want to buy the most biggest bottle of my favorite drink. Mm. Farhan used the word most incorrectly. When we use the EST form of an adjective to compare something, we should not put the word most before it. We say biggest, not most biggest. We say 
tallest, not most tallest, and we say greatest, not most greatest. Got it? So here's what Farhan should have said. And I want to buy the biggest bottle of my favourite drink. Well, make sure you know when to use the words more and most. If you're not sure, look it up in a good grammar book or ask your teacher. We'll be right back with the next segment. Don't go away! Okay, here we are in the final segment. Let's hear it in song. We are going to watch a video clip and listen to a song. It's called Bad Day Blues. It's about a bad day when everything went wrong. I woke up in the morning. I felt so good inside. The new day was just dawning. Everything just seemed so right. And then without a warning, it all just fell apart. Here's what happened from the start. So many times they slammed me to the door I broke my nose, my leg and arms and my head Seven bones Seven bones Poor guy, he reminds me of Jason Yeah, thanks for pushing me down the stairs Anyway, let's take a look at the grammar in the lyrics of the song All yours, Yasmin? The song you heard just now was written in the simple past tense. We use the simple past tense to talk about actions that have been completed before the present time. We can recognize simple past tense by looking at the verb and the time mentioned. Jason? The song starts with, I woke up in the morning. Since woke is the past tense form of the verb wake, you can expect the rest of the lyrics to also be in the past tense. Here are some of the main verbs from the songs that are in the simple past tense. Fell, happened, trip, rolled, hit, spun, slammed, and broke. The past tense form of the verb that you saw are of two types. Regular verbs that end in ed, or irregular verbs that either change their spellings or remain unchanged. So, Yasmin, would you like to give some examples? Sure, Jason. No problem. Happen, trip, and slam are examples of regular verbs with an ed ending. Felt, spun, and broke are irregular verbs which change their spelling when we use them in the past tense. The verb hits is an example of an irregular verb that remains in its original form even though it is in the past tense. Enough of grammar. Let's listen to the song again. But this time, you sing along with us, okay? And watch out for all the regular and irregular verbs in the simple past tense. Here goes. I woke up in the morning, I felt so good inside The new day was just dawning, everything just seemed so right And then without a warning, it all just fell apart Here's what happened from the start Ooh, I tripped and fell, rolled down the stairs And hit the marble floor, I spun around so many times this Well, we have come to the end of the second series of So That's How It Works. We hope that you had fun learning grammar with us. So, put your grammar into gear and we'll see you again on So, so That's, that's how, how It Works. works. Bye! Bye.